Zhytomyr. Today, we'll visit the most mystical place in Ukraine, Stone Village. How many more legends does this land keep? Are you ready to discover? Let's go! Today we are in the Zhytoma region. It's a place full of magic and romance. So let's have a look, shall we? Yes. Da da da. We are here at the Fisherman's House on Love Island. This is originally uh, a man-made island for, for fishermen to come and rest after a long day fishing. But then a house and a bridge was built so tourists like you and I could come here. And this is a very famous spot for wedding couples to come and have a photo shoot. Yes, before the dream is broken. Should we have a look around? Yes, because we can't go inside. Because there's no door. <laughs> Some locals call this hut Baba Yaga's house. What, what am I talking about? You're talking about a very ugly old woman in Slavic folklore. Really? And apparently her house looked like this, except it's on chicken legs. I sometimes feel like a small house on chicken legs, so I can relate. Shall we try and find the chicken, chicken legs, shall we? Try and find Baba Yaga, Baba, Baba. Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga. It's not. So. So dangerous. Baba Yaga! It's not in. It's not in. It'll be awkward if she was in, because we've just assaulted the house. She did call her ugly, so. You got a light? No, come on, leave her alone. She's trying to sleep. Say goodbye. Stoshiski Quarry here in the Zhitoma region, enjoying a beautiful picnic. Yes, uh, uh, this lake was formed of an old granite quarry because we bloody love a quarry, honestly. Um, but rather than go dipping in there, we're just going to sit back, relax, eat some snacks, and enjoy the view. Cheers. Smatch no ho. Smatch no ho. Mm. I like it. I wish I could go dipping in it. I w I'd love to jump off the cliff, but due to some injury you guys probably don't know about. I, um, I'm not going to. I'm not allowed. We don't really have places like this in England, actually. And if we do, they're just cold and grey. So this is a beautiful, beautiful view. Yeah. I want to see some people do some flips, though. If I can't be in danger, I want other people to be in danger. Mm. I'll be doing exactly this. What, well, just sitting down? Sitting down, we'll we'll relaxing. But I think it's a quite popular place. And there's places that you can sit over there. I think you could have a fire. There, there are places you can sit. Uh, there are places you can uh, make a fire. But there I are places like, to no. swim. But Rob, we have the best. Sorry, I'm being we, have, we have the best view though, because we're quite high up. You have the best view. I have the best view. Me. Oh. But I probably have chocolate in my must my mustache. <laughs> what else can you do in a quarry if not have a picnic? Well, there are climbing courses. All of the necessary equipment is provided here, as well as the basic course. And of course, swimming. For this one, you can choose one of the clay slopes. Behind 
us is La Domcil Castle. It is a cultural and historical complex uh, with an area of over 2,500 square meters. Yeah, and it was reconstructed from 2007 to 2011, and it used to be an old paper factory in the 17th century. So, shall we have a look inside? Let's go do some learning. Why was the castle built exactly here? Once upon a time, through this place passed the Way of the Kings. Sounds solid? It is. The Romans built it and it went from Spain to Ukraine. And it was not only a trading route, but also the way to disseminate ideas, knowledge, laws and regulations. Through this way, the civilization spread. We are at the Icons Museum. There's a collection in here of over 5,000 items. Yes, there are lots of uh, pictures, tapestries and stuff depicting the beliefs of ancient Ukrainians. So, and um, we have these handy guides in English to tell us everything we need to know. With a beautiful map, so we shouldn't get lost and we'll know what we're looking at. So let's pop inside. Come on, I'll see you. Thank you. You can see the collection of Ukrainian cradles. The cradles were sacred objects in the house. No matter how many children were in the family, the cradle has always been one and only. If there were no baby, a ragdoll, Matanka in Ukrainian, was kept in the cradle. It reminded of the importance of procreation. Oh, wow. Matankas were made of linen or for girls to play with them. The doll's weight was more than two kilograms, that the girls grew accustomed to carry their future yet unborn children in their arms from the green years. And basically, they hang from the ceiling yeah. um, so the boards don't hit the floor, because if the floor gets wet, then obviously the babies get ill. So to make sure they were oh. off the ground, they were hung from the ceiling. And if they didn't have babies, they yeah. would put fake babies in there uh, as a reminder of how bloody brilliant babies are. Because procreation is the best. So apparently they're quite heavy. One kilogram. One Getting broody? No, it's a bit scary actually, isn't it? Well, it hasn't got a face, so... So if you were like a girl and you didn't have kids, you'd just carry this around. And hopefully you would have one, one day. That's not, how, with a face. That's not how babies are made. I've seen some videos online, I know how babies are made. You know how babies are made? Aww. It's a baby. And it, it constantly pushes the air out. Where are we going now? Let's go in that room. This lovely bell tower. I love a good bell. Yes, Should we give very, it? Very small in here. Um, There's no one around. Jesus is looking at us. 
this. I think. That's not, that's not Jesus. That's Jesus. It's clearly God. It's his dad. God. <laughs> Ring the bell. I don't know if we're allowed to. There's a massive crack in there. Oh, it's there. But it's fine. Wow, we've got an amazing view of... Um... It's like a swamp over there. There's some weird swamp over there. Oh, Beautiful yeah. lakes. Everything looks better from above. It Everything does. looks better from above. I'm sure I look better. Now. Yeah. This was an old paper factory, but one of the cool things about this place is you can make your own paper. Yep, I write on it, I wrap with it, and I wipe with it. But how's it made? Let's go find out. Now it's time to make some paper. Let's go see Oleg, the paper man. Hello. Good afternoon. We're happy to welcome you. My name is Oleg. Oleg, Heather and Rob. My pleasure. Let's take a look at our workshop. Yes, you, you be the assistant. I'll be the assistant to the assistant manager. Wow. Perfect. One size fits all. Yeah. Our paper mill was founded in 1612 by a prominent religious and historical figure, our commandrite of the Kiev Pechersk Lavra, called Elisha Pletinetsky. Out of all the Orthodox churches at the time, it was built as the largest paper mill in central Ukraine and worked to make paper exclusively for the Kiev Pechersk Lavra. For the paper, first of all, it was necessary to make a special watery solution called pulp. It is made of flax, garlic peel, onion and dried nettle with some chalk. So you make your you make your special paper water, and then what's what's next? Yeah. Then the solution is boiled in a certain way for quite a long time, resulting in such a substance called paper pulp. Oh. This is what it looks like. That is how all paper is made. Mm. Yeah, some pre-paper. Pre yeah. To do this, we need a special frame like this. It is called decal and consists of two parts. The bottom has a chopped base through which water passes, and the mixture of fibres is formed into a raw sheet of paper. There is also a special sign, the so-called filigree, using which we get a watermark on paper. We take our decal, scoop up some paper pulp, shake vigorously, give it a shake, yeah, find some gold, and then let it drain from the edges. Gently, gently. Yeah, wait, dry it off. Put everything on a tray. Let it dry. Slightly lift the top side. And we get a raw sheet of paper on the bottom frame of the decal. Look at that. Paper. Hold it. Turn it over gently. Carefully. And put some pressure evenly on the sides. Yeah, push it. Push it down. Yeah. Get out. <laughs> as if opening a book, we would get such a sheet. Wow. And we've made our first paper. How, how paper many water. have you made in your lifetime, Ola? Well, maybe around 5,000, and that's it. 5,000 in a year? Wow. Okay, and this... Usually, monks made up to 400 of them. They had large groups of 10 people, specially trained. And 10 people for one day could make a stack of 400 sheets of paper, cover it with a large cloth, and carry the finished pallet to the press. This is an ancient uh, press. press. Now we press it hard and clamp it. Oh, now, yep. Yeah. You're going to help me out? And how the turntables. Whee! Oh! Go on, spin it. Give it good. Oh, yeah. Alright, alright. I'll chip my nail. Whee! Well yeah, done. Now then. Here you go. Oh, oh, I'm going to lift it up. Oh, right, OK, good up. I mean, this is our first time making paper, so... Let's put it on a folding table. Up to the next table. Oh, Whee! Like this little conveyor belt. Yeah. And next on the production line... Remove the cloth. Oh, oh let's see excited. how it looks. Remove one sheet. Oh. And another sheet is ready now. We've put, we put it on that. Yeah, that is textbook. Well, it will be a textbook. Next, take a wooden stick. What are we doing 
Так, притискаємо, Press. загортаємо край. Ah, так. Wrap the edge and stick it to the handle. Рульки. And just repeat whatever he is doing. And slightly lift it. Wow. Against the light, we can see the watermark and our paper. High quality one. Little tortilla. Delicious. Yes, and what's the, the, the symbol? Four of these churches correspond to the four bell towers of the Kiev Pechersk Lavra. Actually, it points to four old Orthodox churches. And now using this handle, we put it on a rope. Yeah. To dry. Wow. Oh, that's beautiful. Paper on the washing line. It will take a day. And we will take the dry one and continue. Hold this and tilt to the bottom. Wow. Oh, souvenir! Yeah, you can, okay? So but he won't let you hold it on your own. What does he hold it on his own? I wonder why. <laughs> It's very, it's just very dangerous, Heather. <laughs> Putting it like that, hovering it over. How will that happen? Enough. <laughs> Heather, it's too keen. It's it's too paper. Here is a wet cloth and a press. Cover lightly and carry to. Oh, but it's the same as that. We're going to go over, back again. Let's go over there. Do some more pressing. <coughs> now centre it. The main principle of printing is quite simple. Put it in and release immediately. Yeah, you do it, it's fine. Hey! There we go. Now it's a party. God, it's so good. He's watching out for his elbows. <laughs> yeah. That's it. There we go. He's having fun with it now. Hey! A minute of work and you get a completed thing. Oh, and we're taking Let's go to the desktop and see. Oh. Raise the cover and the corners. Which way? That way? Flick it up, flick it up. Let's see it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I did yours upside down, yeah. That's the thing. It is ready. Don't put it down. We've seen the watermark about three times. <laughs> what does it say? This is the prayer called Our Father in Ukrainian. Oh, it's been an absolute pleasure. pleasure. Thank you for your sincere help. And can we take this? The place yeah. is wet. Thank you. Wonderful. place full of magic and mystery, so we have a spooky story for you. Very spooky. So uh, many moons ago, uh, in the old paper factory, a monk worked there. He used to write love letters to his, to his girlfriend. Very bad, because he stole the paper to write those love letters. His boss found out, murdered him, and now his ghost roams the corridors, stealing paper and writing love letters. And there is a statue of him. Just there in the Just over there. It looks a bit chill, actually. Yeah, I, I've got chills from that scary story, <laughs> I tell you. I need to go sit down. Stand up and sit down. <laughs> Have you noticed all these small sculptures of saints and angels all over the estate? Well, I wonder why there are so many of them here. To be fair, the priests who built this lock, they believed it could save them from troubles and pain. I'm sure it helped because this beauty has been preserved for centuries. And there's also a nine bell tower. Yep, and like most things in Ukraine, you're able to make a wish on these things and hopefully they'll come true. Um, should we do some dinging of the bells? Yeah, seeing, yeah. seeing as we're here, it'd be rude not to. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, every time. Let them ring. Ancient and powerful place in the Jatoma region is right here 
in the Stone Village, and it's the Ukrainian place of power. Yes, bioenergy experts say that this place has a really special energy, thus creating miracles. However, scientists say uh, these rocks appeared many years ago when a glacier passed through from the north, which, make, which makes more sense. Yeah? All right. All right, let's go look at these massive magical boulders then. Oh no, how am I gonna get down? So what is this stone village? It is a beautiful forest path where you can find huge, moss-covered granite stones. And each of them is more than two million years. Interesting legend Did about you? these rocks. Yes. So the devil wanted to build a mill here, but God said no. So in retaliation, the devil slashed their tails, creating this formation. I'm sure that's exactly, exactly what happened. Let's go see some more legends, shall we? Another magical place is the gap between the boulders. If you climb through it, they say a person can be born a second time. Almost like in a fairy tale, the younger and more beautiful version of himself or herself. So you'll notice uh, around this area, there's lots of ribbons uh, around all the rocks, uh, which I believe is some sort of pagan ritual. Yes, so. If you had someone who passed away, you would tie a ribbon in memory of them in the hopes that you can connect them to the sacred energy within these rocks. Yeah, uh, it's also very useful because where the ribbons are, it means it's where the important rocks are as well. So, yeah, let's follow the ribbons, shall we? So we are now stood on God's stone, uh, which has a fun story attached to it as well. Supposedly God came down, uh, very tired after his trip. He asked everyone in this village uh, for, some, for some water and some bread. But most of them said no, except one guy who gave him a piece of bread, but it was very stale. So God was like, y'all are selfish. I'm going to turn all of your houses to stone. Yep, and, and um, yeah, this was the stone that he stood, this is the house he stood on when he turned everyone's house into, into rocks. And there's a footprint of God on here as well. I think he's a size 11. <laughs> it's massive, to be fair. This is, I think, God's footprint. Right. From the angle that I'm at, it looks... Or like... It could be, from this angle, looks like a boot. Yes, we'll call it a boot. It looks like a, the shape of a boot, nothing else. Yes, yeah, like a little Italy. Well, what a wonderful stone village. Absolutely. I think this place is very magical, mystical. I don't know, just the way it looks is out of the film, in my opinion. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite, it's quite magnificent. The boulders are huge, the stones yeah. are huge, and, um, yeah, it's a, really cool, it's a really cool place to, like, explore and, and look around. I've got a few life hacks for you, though. Number one, make sure you don't wear sandals. Um, yeah, not rock climbing shoes. No. Very dangerous. Also bring some insect repellent because there are, like, mosquitoes around. Um, another awesome thing, though, about this place is it's free. So, yeah, it's free to visit. That's Stroll in, climb some rocks, tie some ribbons to a tree. Win-win in my eyes. Yeah. And a picnic. I think a picnic. Always bring a picnic. Wherever you go in Ukraine, bring a picnic. Yeah. Let's just enjoy the beautiful view. Let's enjoy the magical rocks. Feel the energy. Well, we felt the energy of the stone village and we're ready to move on. Let's go.